All right, teammates, 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 we are back once again. If this is your first time listening to the Move Swiftly podcast, welcome to the number one show on innovative teamwork. Great to have you. Looking forward to having you back for more. To my regular listeners, again, shout out to Podmatch for getting these things done for me, getting these guests booked so I can put my focus on what I'm good at, which is recording and getting the message out there. Today, I am I am re- I ain't got a lot to you, Brandon. I'm a little intimidated and excited at the same time because every time I hear the word SEO, a little, there's a bit of intimidation that comes upon me. All right. I don't know it when I first got into business and doing this and doing that. I didn't even know what the term meant for a while. And, you know, you run a company named SEO Optimizers and you you help people when it comes to you know, figuring out the best words to use when it comes to Google and the whole thing and things like that. So I'm really looking forward to hearing your story. So before I get too, before I make the intro too long, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Brandon Lebowitz. Welcome to the Move Swiftly podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on today. Yes. And like I mentioned, you are an expert in all things SEO, right? You know, and and for those of you who don't know, SEO stands for search engine optimization. And, you know, as uh, as I was kind of getting ready for this and I was listening to you on other shows, I'm curious in how, you know, how does one prepare for a life in when it comes to SEO expertise? You know, like how was school? How were things for you growing up? Because I'm not sure if SEO was like a big term when you were growing up or did it happen when the Internet started to blow up and things like that. So kind of just walk us through your background, you know, where you came from and how you got into to doing the work you're doing, man. And I never knew about SEO growing up until I graduated from college and got my there you go. Oh, man. business marketing. Yeah, after I graduated, that's when I learned about it. So not even at school, they didn't really talk about it. So now no did idea. your did your school experience though? You said you you majored in marketing. Did you yeah. attribute your school experience at all? Did it help at all? Did it do anything to prepare you for it or anything like that? Or like how how did uh you know how was school for you? <laughs> It's good, but they didn't really talk about digital marketing too much, a little bit, but not much in there. So it didn't really help too much with SEO, but overall it helped with business and marketing, kind Mm -hmm. of like traditional marketing, TV, print, radio, stuff like that. But in terms of digital, they, I'm sure nowadays they do it more, but back in 2007, six, five, four, they didn't really talk about it too much. Right. Okay, so how'd you, you know, how'd you get involved? You know, you can kind of go ahead and give us your background a little bit. I'll give you kind of an open slate and, you know, kind of run with it. Yeah, that was right after I graduated. The first job was like, we want you to do digital marketing. And I told them, I don't really know what this is. I mean, I know what marketing and digital marketing is, but I don't know much about this SEO stuff. And they said, don't worry, we're going to take you to classes and workshops and seminars and kind of learn with you. And after or decided to give it a shot and after working there for a few months just kind of realized this is probably the future everyone's probably going to have a website and maybe i should just stick with this digital stuff instead of going after traditional marketing and just never really looked back after that just kind of hit the ground running working at different advertising agencies and before work or after work and on my lunch breaks i'd work in my own company and built that up to eventually where i was able to quit my job and just been doing this ever since just helping people really tap into that free traffic from Google. So when you, you mentioned being in certain advertising agencies, what are, what were some of the common denominators that you saw when it comes to the, the companies that you were working with that were successful? Like the companies, can you give any like case studies or examples in which you were able to help a company get more clients because of some of the work you did? Yeah, there's lots of different companies. I guess we go back to the agency that I used to work at. There mm-hmm. is like a hotel, can't really name the name, but it was a really big hotel chain and they wanted just more visibility, more people finding them. So helped out with not only just optimizing their website, putting keywords all over their website to get Google to better read, understand and know what that page is about, but working on Google Maps. So trying to make sure that they rank locally in all those different cities that they had, hotels, countries, continents because they were global so just trying to make sure that everything was good across the board and that they were searched or were findable when people searched for hotels near me and fill in the blank but near me whatever city they were in and that required creating local directories and getting them up on not only apple map or google maps but hundreds of other maps like apple maps and bing maps and yellow pages and 
map quest and the more maps you're on the higher you're going to rank on google maps so hmm. working on all that just trying to make sure that people are finding them more and after the, doing that for a few months seo is not immediate it takes some time but after doing that for a couple months they started seeing their traffic increasing not only to their website but on their google maps listings and getting more exposure and more visibility and just getting more people inquiring about their hotels. Once they get to their website, I can't really control if they book a room or not. That's that's on them to make the sale. Yeah. Right. Yep. That's more conversion rate optimization is how do you optimize your website to convert? Because getting people to your website is really just half the battle. Once mm -hmm. they get there, how do, how do you get them to trust you and want to use you and spend their money with you, which is very, very tough. Right now, when you were when you were branching off and doing it on your own, like you said, on your break, what were you like? What was making you different from the agency? What was making people work with you? Like, what were you doing to decipher yourself to make it so people wanted to work with you specifically? Well, they just saw that I've been doing it for a while, that mm -hmm. I have a track record of ranking websites and that. I'm probably a little bit cheaper than the agency because back then I was just doing it by myself. Agencies charge a lot because they have a lot of a lot of overhead. Mm -hmm. uh, project managers, account managers, sales, accountants, HR, a whole gauntlet right. of employees. So they have a lot more fixed costs. So their prices are much more expensive than an individual freelancer, which back then I was just doing it myself and was kind of a one person shop would kind of take care of everything. So my costs were much more affordable, especially for right. smaller businesses that are just starting up. They can't really afford to spend tens of thousands of dollars a month on SEO and have to wait for six months for it to kick in. So right. that's where I could help differentiate myself from them. Well, I, I think it's also important that we mention to the listeners as well, because there are a lot of folks out there who might think that you're a miracle worker, you know, just because you might know SEO. So they pay you a certain amount and they think it's going to automatically lead to immediate results. But I love how you mentioned the fact that it takes six months for things to kick in. So what can, what should an ideal client like yours or of yours, what should they be doing within that six months? You know, how should, how do you deal with probably some of the impatience that you may deal with when somebody comes to you and say, hey, I want my stuff ranking a certain way and things aren't getting the immediate results. What to that to that person, what do you like say? How do you manage that? Or has that ever come up? <laughs> no, I tell them before we start working together. That way they're not just waiting and looking like what's going on. It's been three right. months. I'm not getting this traffic. So set expectations ahead of time and just let them know SEO takes time. It's not immediate, unfortunately. If you want immediate results and got to do paid ads or social media or email marketing or something else like that. But SEO, it's more of a little patient long-term game mm -hmm. where you just have to wait for Google to trust you because getting Google to trust you takes time. Mm -hmm. That's part that takes the most time is you can put keywords on your website. That's not going to do anything. Google doesn't care about anything you put on the website because they just don't believe you. And you have to build that trust up. And the way to get trusted from Google is by getting other websites to talk about you. The more websites that talk about you, the more popular Google sees you as, and then they look at those keywords on your website. But if you're not building what are called backlinks, you're not going to get Google to trust you, and they're not going to rank a website that they don't trust. And what is a backlink? Yeah, backlink. you actually, you, <laughs> you beat me to it. I was just about to, okay, please, just walk us through what you mean by backlinks then. Yeah, no, backlink is a clickable link from another website that points to yours. So let's say, for example, you're reading an article on the internet on the newyorktimes.com and there it says Brandon Leibowitz. You click on it and it goes to my website. I'd be getting a backlink from the newyorktimes.com. So the more websites that have clickable links that point to yours, the more popular, the more trust Google's gonna give to you and the higher they're gonna rank you. But that all takes time. That's what takes the most time with SEO is building backlinks, getting Google to find them, seeing them, and then starting to slowly, little bit by little, trusting you more. Man, I the thing is, I, this is all, again, this is information for me. I didn't realize that because the way you're talking about Google is that, as if it's an actual human being, right? As if they have to trust you, they have to make sure that, you know, you're legit and they're not just going to put anything out there. So that leads me to a, like the next talking point is, do you recommend, how do you go about recommending 
you know, using advertising and doing for paid advertising, you know, what is the, what is the way you sort of manage or you advise people to pay for ads versus go with a SEO company like yours? How do you manage that conversation? Both work. It just depends what they're looking for. If they want immediate results, Google ads, but right. in the long run, ads are going to be expensive and it's much more cost-effective and people trust the organic more than the ad. So Long run, SEO is going to be the best. Mm -hmm. In the short run, you need immediate results, paid ads work. And it's not bad run ads as long as you're making more than you're putting in. So that's the biggest thing is if you're spending more money than you're making, then you probably want to cut those ads off. But if you're making money off those ads, there's no need to ever shut them off. But right. in the long run, you don't want to only rely on ads because when you do shut them off, you disappear. Whereas with SEO, you stop doing SEO, you're eventually going to disappear, but it takes time because your competition has to outrank you. And as I just said earlier, like it takes time for everything to rank. So it's going to take time for your competition to outrank you and you're not just going to disappear, which is the nice thing. Yes. And you have to be, and, and this is an important point for all of all the listeners out there is you have to be all in with your business. Okay. You have to really start some, you can't just be out there putting up a website and, you know, if things don't work out within the week and all of a sudden you're moving on to something else. You really have to believe in your offer. You have to believe in your service. You have to believe in the way you package your service. You cannot just throw out your, your website, make a fancy website. And all of a sudden you, you think things are just going to work out. It doesn't work like that. Business doesn't work like that. And if you believe in what you're doing, then you shouldn't even want it to work like that. You should want it to be something that's going to be long lasting. And that, that brings me to another point because I, I, me personally, I hired a coach and I also did, you know, I do pay someone to do some SEO stuff for me as well, because again, it's fairly intimidating. And the, the thing that I'm thinking of when it comes to SEO is how do I manage social media, right? I'm not, I don't get a lot of likes on, so I don't have a lot of followers on social media. I, I've been told that social media is, is not something that you go to when you go make a sale, but when it comes to SEO, when it comes to people like you who are working and you know, are experts in this space, where do you see social media in terms of importance and in terms of not important? You know, can you kind of walk us through how you manage people's social media accounts or if you've managed social, how you manage the whole social media world? And social media is a great way to get new eyeballs on your content, your website, but doesn't really help out with SEO. They're completely separate. So wow. social media, having a big following, if you have a million followers on Instagram, it's not going to have any real impact on the SEO because Google's blocked from most social media. So they don't really see what's going on behind the scenes, but social is good for businesses, depending on like what you're doing. Like sometimes it might not be the best if you're a dentist. Are you really going to get people looking for a dentist on Facebook, Instagram? Some people might, but most people are probably going to go on Google mm -hmm. or Yelp looking for the dentist and then make sure they're real trustworthy and credible by checking them out on Facebook and Instagram and making sure they have updates, making sure they're still in business and things like that. But it just depends on the business. Not always is social the best, but it is good for social proof and building trust and credibility. Right. And it, it, that's, a, that's an important point for you guys to, to understand because there's a shot of dopamine a lot of times when people post something on social media and they get a lot of likes and it can become a distraction. And what's important for you guys to understand is just because you may have a lot of likes and like you just said, you may have a lot of followers, it doesn't translate into receipts. And you guys know on this show what we're about, we're about educating business owners on innovative teamwork. And I'm not telling you not to use social media. I'm telling you again, if you really want to be in business, you're in the business of making sure the revenue's coming in, making sure you're generating something that's coming, making sure the money's coming in in a regular way. And it's not going to happen via social media. It's going to be happening when people look you up on Google, right? Look you up on Google and you get, you know, you get someone to reach out to you and that's how a sale gets done. That's how these things work. So, you know, with, with all that, I, I want to make sure we, uh, we get into specifically what your company is all about. And, you know, I know you kind of briefly mentioned how you started it before, but can you just talk about your ideal client, what you do for them and, you know, how you're able to work with them. If someone's listening to you right now, how they can reach out, all that good stuff. You know, usually work with e-commerce or local businesses. It's not really any specific industry because with SEO, whether you're a doctor or a mechanic or selling 
t-shirts, it's all kind of same strat similar strategies with the keyword research. It's just changing the keywords from the doctor to mechanic or to whatever it is. And then the same with the backlinks. It's just adjusting those backlinks to find sites that are related to what you're doing. So like with the dentist or doctor, we want mm -hmm. to find websites related to health and wellness. If it's a mechanic, we want websites about automobiles and cars. So pretty much any industry could work with it and just really try to focus more on e-commerce and local businesses. And for anyone that wants to learn more, I create a special gift for them. If they go to my website at seooptimizers.com, that's S E O O P T. I M I Z E R S dot com forward slash gift. We'll include we'll include it in the show notes. Don't worry about it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, they can find it there. Okay. Now what's the uh what's kind of the what would you say the the first step that you would put um that you would that you would put them on or tell them to do, you know, when they when they reach out? It would be doing a free website analysis. So mm -hmm. Cause it's not one size fits all. Every website's different. So I need to look at your website versus the competition. Just figure out what are you doing that, or what is the competition doing that you're not doing and how can we get you to that level that you want to be at? So have to look at your website, look at your competitors, look at your backlinks, look at your keywords, and then could give you a roadmap because it's not really one size fits all. There's a lot of similarities, but I have to look at each website individually. Okay, great, great. And uh, what's so what what would you say is the next like the next step for SEO app optimizers like what do you have planned for the future is it just going to be staying the run, running the business the way you have it now or is it going to be some like big major thing that people can look forward to and you know when events going up right now you can kind of plug what your what your goals are for the future well I'm just working on some courses and been teaching courses since 2013 but putting together a more in-depth Kind of right now, I have a lot of free classes that they could find like on YouTube, just searching my name, but working to compile all that into something just a little bit more kind of organized and structured to make a 12 week plan. Mm -hmm. Now, these are these are courses specifically for business owners or courses for people that want to help with SEO stuff. Like do you have a staff underneath you or who are the courses for? Either one. So if you want to learn SEO, do it yourself. Hire somebody if you're trying to get into that career. If you're a business owner, it goes over. So it just depends on how much you want to learn. If you're a business owner, you probably need only half of my course because right. it's not going to be relevant to you. But if you're trying to become an SEO expert, then you probably want to watch everything because a local business doesn't care about, or if an e-commerce business or like a, a service-based business doesn't need to learn about selling products and vice versa, like someone selling products doesn't necessarily need to learn local unless they're a local business, but each one's going to be different. So it's kind of just figure out my local business, my e-commerce, what do I need to do? Because each strategy is going to be slightly different depending on what type of business you're in. I got you. I'm, I'm asking because I, I, I teach at a, I teach at a brand new startup school named Center for Creative Education. And I have a, a fellow coworker who wants to learn SEO. So I'm pretty much asking for her to, to you know, kind of, put you guys in touch so make sure you stay in touch when i i gotta let her know that you offer that kind of stuff because again we were talking about seo the other day and i was telling her the same thing i'm telling you i was like man i, I that stuff it, it's so it seems like it's so much you got to learn but she's like look if you learn it there's you have clients for life because there's always going to be someone willing to pay someone else to help them with their seo and their traffic and things like that so with all that brandon the way i uh the way I close out all the shows is I want you to use your imagination a little bit. Uh, just you pretend that your pretend that your younger self is here. You're in college. You are working. I'm not working. You're a student in this marketing class. You just get you just get this job offer, and they tell you something about SEO. You have no idea what's going on. You're kind of new to this world. Pretend that that young Brandon has just clicked into the Zoom room. Just give him some words of encouragement, and we'll officially close. <laughs> Yeah, just say, keep at it. Don't get discouraged and test and try things out. Don't just read what you read online and think that's what's going to work. Got to try it out and test and see what works and continually just be testing because a lot of people get sucked into reading and learning, which is great, but you have to actually take what you've learned and implement it versus just listening and reading and watching, which I got stuck in for a while. Everyone gets stuck in it. I'm still kind of stuck in it every once in a while because SEO changes so much, AI and everything. So just trying to learn everything and 
trying to test and see really what works for me and my clients and then going into that more. Constantly applying what you learn. Love that, love that, love that. All right, fellow teammates, continue to move swiftly. We will talk more soon.